Good afternoon, everybody. Hope your Monday is going well so far today. And I think it's time we have a very special conversation about a very special player so far this preseason for the Seahawks. This is a guy who had a big game against the Vikings, and some people were getting really hyped up. I uh, held off a little bit because I was like, it's one game. The The odds of this guy making the team are still really high. It, it It's not enough. It's not enough. Well, he had another really good game against the Cowboys, and now you at least got to talk about it, right? You at least got to take it seriously. Yeah, we're talking about Levi Bell today. A guy who... Went to college at Texas State, the Bobcats, a small school. Played in the quote-unquote developmental league for the NFL this year. And then found his way to the Seahawks. And it seems like that time in the quote-unquote developmental league has helped. Because he has been excellent through two games. And now that we know that this isn't a one-off fluke, we know that at least he can do this for more than one game. We should have the conversation. Is there room for him on this team? Because the way he's playing, the practice squad is no guarantee. Somebody out there, there are 31 other teams. One of those teams might look at Levi Bell and go, you know what? This guy belongs in the NFL right now. Especially if he plays well this upcoming week against Green Bay. But even without that, what we've seen right now is enough to get somebody's attention. And there are some teams that are really bad that know they're going to be bad that will be okay spending a 53-man roster spot on a guy who may not be all the way there yet. Like, there are teams that think they're going to be competitive this year, that are planning on being competitive, who maybe wouldn't do that. They want guys who can go now. But if a team like the Texans, that kind of knows they're going to be bad, or the Rams or the Cardinals, who, who deep down know this is a rebuilding year, want to spend a roster spot on a guy with great potential like this, who maybe needs another year of seasoning potentially, they they would do it. And honestly, maybe one of those teams that wants to compete now would do it. Maybe they feel like he's ready. He did spend the offseason in the uh, developmental league. So, Levi Bell, let's uh, talk about it. First, let's start with his play so far. He is about as high ranked as you can be on PFF. 91 overall grade almost, almost 90 pass rush grade, 71.6 run defense grade. So he's well-rounded. He's not just doing one thing. He's getting consistent QB pressure, and he's stuffing the run. More on that in a second, but let, let's just get that out of the way. This guy's playing great, and he's played great across two games now. Yes, he is playing against backups, but a lot of guys are going up against backups right now. They're not playing like this. And at the end of the day, it is the job of every NFL team to assemble a roster of their 53 best guys. And based off what we've seen so far, it would be hard to argue against Levi Bell being one of our 53 best guys. It would be. So with that being said, how can we make this work? If we go to the uh, spreadsheet that I showed earlier today, and by the way, because I know I totally spaced on this when I made the initial video, Kobe Bryant has been subbed in for Artie Burns, and Artie Burns is now getting released. I totally forgot about Kobe, forgot to put him in for Artie Burns, but that's fixed now. So, anyway, back to the topic at hand. You look at edge rusher, Uchenna Nwosu just signed a big extension, he's not going anywhere. Boye Mafe looks like he's in for a second-year breakout, not going anywhere. Derek Hall, rookie, you just spent a second-round pick on him, not going anywhere. Tyreek Smith. With the preseason he's had, and this and this is coming from me, a guy who was not a huge Tyreek Smith fan when we took him, he's not going anywhere either, I don't think. Like, he's played, maybe he hasn't played quite as good as Levi Bell, but Tyreek Smith has more pedigree. Played at Ohio State, put up good performances at Ohio State. Showed good potential at Ohio State. We spent a draft pick on him. So, Tyreek Smith is not going anywhere. So, the only route to getting Levi Bell in this edge rusher group, traditionally, would be to trade Daryl Taylor. He's the one guy who maybe you could deal and get an asset back and not horribly miss. And then that bumps up Hall, which bumps up Smith, and that gets Levi Bell on the roster as your fifth edge guy. But you're not going to have six edge players, I don't think. You could, but what would you give up? Somebody else on the roster, right? Are you cutting somebody like... uh? 
Stone Forsyth or Greg Island and just rolling with nine offensive linemen. That's dangerous. Rolling with nine offensive linemen can be a scary proposition. I don't know if you want to do that. Now, granted, these are two guys that a lot of people wouldn't miss, but if you cut one of them, don't you just bring in another offensive lineman to replace him, probably? You would think so. Can we go with three running backs? Probably not. We need all of our running backs. We've already proven they can't struggle to stay healthy and the season hasn't started yet. We can't go with four receivers, can't go with two tight ends. Maybe we could go with three nose tackles, but who are you getting rid of? Keeping in mind that Brian Monet is due a lot of money, even if you release him, because of his contract and the fact that he's injured. So you can't do that. Can't go with three defensive ends. Can you go with three inside linebackers? Maybe, but again, especially with Brooks coming back, I don't think you want to do that. Are you letting Kobe Bryant go and throwing in the towel on him? I don't think you're doing that either. So I don't see how you make room for Levi Bell in a traditional sense. So what else could you do here? You, like I said, you could carry six edge rushers, but how are you going to use six edge rushers? There are only two on the field at once. You're going to rotate the third guy and fourth guy in no problem. The fifth guy is probably your break glass in case of emergency option, like somebody got hurt, somebody's winded, all right, go in for a few plays here and there. But you're definitely not getting down to the sixth guy unless disaster strikes. So carrying a sixth edge rusher is something that I wouldn't expect this team to be willing to do. I don't think most teams would be willing to do it. So what's left? If you want to get Levi Bell on this roster, what's left? Well, you need to find another role for him. So I want to take a look at some tweets from Corbin Smith after the uh, game last week, or two weeks ago and last week. To First of all, I want to hammer home just how effective this guy has been, which is why we're having this conversation. For a typical player, like as good as Jacob Sykes has been, I don't think this conversation and this bending over backwards is worth having for him. Levi Bell has been so good, however, over the top good, that I think we need to at least have this conversation. So Corbin Smith here had Levi Bell pressuring the quarterback six times on 21 pass rushing snaps in the game against the Vikings, which is an insane 30% pressure rate. Absolutely unfair. And he also chimes in here that he thinks that he played much better against the run in the, pre in, um, in the Cowboys game than the Vikings game, and he had him down for another three QB pressures. So you put it together. Levi Bell has nine QB pressures in less than 40 pass rush attempts. And he made three tackles in the run game for two or fewer yards, according to this tweet from Corbin. So that's, that's insane production. That's insanely productive. So understand why we're having this conversation. And then let's, uh, let's think laterally here for a second, because Corbin Smith also tweeted this, or Z did it. Levi Bell, according to him, played nine snaps last night over the B-gap. He was a three-tech defensive tackle for Texas State last year. So this is a guy who has played interior defensive line. Not in the NFL, of course, but at college, at the college level, which, I mean, Texas State, small school, I get that. But even in the uh, game a couple nights ago, Levi Bell did play on the interior at least a little bit at least enough to make us wonder, is that how he gets on here? Because our defensive line is much less set than the edge room. There's actually room here to get in. There are some things you could do here. You could put Brian Monet on IR. It sounds like he may not be ready, so that would be one way to reduce the problem for at least a few weeks, and that would allow Levi Bell to at least get on the team and show what he can do. You could decide, depending on what you see from Mario Edwards in camp the next couple weeks, for all we know, we're going to find out he's got nothing left in the tank. He's going to be out of here soon. That's possible. And you replace him with uh, Miles Adams, and then you bump in Levi Bell as your backup defensive end. Like, there are some ways here. It's much easier to clear room on this defensive line than it is in the edge room. The edge guys can't really go anywhere. They're too interesting. They're too good. They're too cheap or you know, for one reason or another, really hard to move off those guys. These guys, on the other hand, if you really needed to, you could. So 
here's my question. What is Levi Bell's current weight? If you go to PFF, they have him listed at 275. That might work. You go to lastwordonsports.com, which has his scouting report from his uh, college career at Texas State. They have 262 pounds. That's not going to work. And then if you go to sportsreference.com, his stats page, 276. So, which is it? How much does he weigh? Does he have enough? In, does he have enough junk in the trunk to hold up in the trenches at the defensive end position? Because I believe Draymond Jones is around 285, 290, and Mike Morris is going to be about 295 if the um, original plan came to fruition. So, in order to get down in there, I got to believe you got to be at least 285. Maybe you could get away with like 280. And if he really is 276 pounds, he could get there. Give him a weekend. Give him a weekend, he'll get there. No problem. But if he's 262, I mean, that's a a five tech in the NFL. That's not really what we're looking for at all. That's not going to cut the mustard at all. So, yeah. Can he play inside enough? Because then you're talking about a player who is bringing ultimate versatility. Then you're talking about a guy who can play on the edge and he can play on the line inside. Now you're talking about a guy who is too valuable to let go because he can give you so many different things. And then I think you have to make room for him somehow. Again, there are a few things you can do. There are a couple guys who are injured. You could shove to IR for a little bit. And then if Levi Bell's killing it in the regular season, you just go, well, we're going to ride with this. So what would you do? Or... Are you more on the side of, hey, this guy hasn't proven anything real yet. Don't get excited. He's not going to make this team. Let me know what you think. Go Hawks.